Water Buffalo TM is back with another Buff Talk. All right, three, two, one. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Old School Matt here, back with another Buff Talk. Today, I'm joined by a special guest, longtime friend of mine, Ahmed El Biali, a professional boxer. He's been on the podcast a long time ago, and it's been quite some time. We got finally got to sit down and have a conversation. So, welcome to the show, Ahmed. Thanks for coming by, bro. Oh, man. Thank you so much for having me. It's Anytime. good to see you, bro. It's good to see you, too. I mean, we haven't seen each other other than this weekend, like a year or two years at least. Yeah. Um, last time you came, last time we saw each other was with uh, Tyson, right? Tyson with, Fury. Yeah, Tyson was around during post-COVID. Yeah, like 2021, yeah. mid-2021. Real quick, funny story, how me and Ahmed met was, um, I think I was just starting like my whole thing online. I didn't really know much about anything. And I remember like just going on Instagram and just, I was either on hashtags of like boxing or I was watching videos and I saw something of yours and I was like, let me reach out to this guy and see like if he'd be down to do a podcast. And I think you just said, yeah, you were like, sure. Yeah. And it worked out, right? Yeah, it worked out really well. You ended up knowing Brian. Uh, yep. Uh, Tilly. Tilly. Yep. Uh, and that's awesome another, dude. another funny story is I, I went to school at a school that my gym coach was actually a boxing, he was part of the boxing commission. That's what he does, right? Florida boxing commission. Yeah. Yep. And he happened to know Ahmed for many years before. Yeah. And Brian, we just happened to know each other. Brian's yeah. been around boxing, bro. He's been around Don, Al Heyman. He's yeah. ma managed so many boxing events. Awesome dude. He's helped me get away with a lot of stuff in the locker room too. So he's really, like, really good dude. Let's yeah. me drink some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I don't want to get him in trouble, but yeah, that's funny. And, um, just like kind of hitting on how small the world is. We, we like just met over the internet. I was a young kid. I was like just, just uh, probably 19 at the time, 20. So three years ago. You're still a kid. Yeah, you're still a kid too. Uh -huh. but, um, <laughs> I'm a grown so, ass kid. Yeah, we're both, well, dude, I'm not a kid anymore. We're both grown <laughs> ass kids. But um, anyways, it was just interesting how all that kind of unfolded. And we're here now, years later, doing some stuff together and, and, and you know, kind of, Funny how things work out, right? Oh, absolutely, bro. And I appreciate you really for having me. Hell, you know, this is a, uh, it's hella fun. And I don't mean to say you're a kid. You're a really responsible kid, bro. You're a kid. Thank with, you. you. You got shit rolling. So it's, uh, this is cool. Let's yeah. Trying my best. Um, but anyways, I wanted to get you on the podcast because I wanted to talk to you about some things. Um, I know mainly the podcasts you've done have been all boxing related, right? Everyone wants to know, like, you did this with this famous person, the whole thing with, uh, what's the beef with Caleb Plant, right? That was all a big oh, thing. Bro, like, or whatever. You know, yeah, I think, I, honestly, I think that's how I, I found out about you, was that video. Oh, when the, that, all oh, that shit was yes, going crazy. Yes, 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 yes. I yes. think that's when I was like, let me that's reach exactly out to this when guy. You found out. Yeah, like, was it exactly? Yeah, that's exactly when it popped off. You're okay. Because right. the video was posted years before. It's yeah. a year before that actually happened. And, and he started to become relevant because of Canelo, right? Uh, I think, uh, I can't say that, bro, because uh, Caleb's a very good fighter. He's been relevant since the amateurs. Okay. Uh, and Canelo's Canelo. And, and all these guys are top fighters. And so. this is me speaking outside of my area of expertise. I don't know shit about the intricacies of boxing. I just know what everyone knows, highlight, you know, the highlights. Yeah. But, um, no, we wanted to get into a podcast and not talk about the specifics of that. I'm sure we'll get into some boxing, but more about Ahmed and like his life. Because you weren't even born in the U.S., right? You moved here. I was born in Cairo, yep. yep. I was born in Cairo, came here when I was four. And how was that? Like, I know that that's not a super big culture change because you were still a young kid, but you, we talked about this just before we got on the podcast. Is like you growing up around, around, uh, around a bunch of white kids. How was that? Like Egyptian kid in uh, Florida. I, I remember the day leaving Egypt. I was very scared leaving Egypt as a kid. I, I don't know why. I was so scared that I pissed myself. I pissed myself on the plane. You like, remember? I remember getting like as I was four. I remember peeing myself on the plane on the seat. My mm -hmm. mom's like, "Bro, you pissed on the seat." I don't care. You remember that, or you remember people telling you that? No, I, re I remember crying to my aunt saying like, "Oh." Auntie, I'm scared. I don't want to ride. I don't want to go. I want to be with you. I don't want to ride the plane. Um, yeah, but America, brother. Uh, God bless America. America's the land yeah. of opportunity. It gives you a dream from zero. Yeah. You literally can watch TV, see something you like, and say, I want to do that. Put all your effort to it, and it'll happen. Um, as far as my friends, yeah. Grew up in Sunny Isles Beach. Yeah. Wild little white boys. Always getting in trouble. Uh, it was good. Like, uh, 
I was fortunate enough to also be schooled in schools where I was uh, around every type of ethnicity. Uh, I grew up playing hockey. I grew up playing American football. I boxed while doing it. I ran track. So it was, uh, it was a great experience living in America. It's a, a one-of-a-kind experience. Uh, to say that this is one world, it's, it's really crazy. America makes you feel like there's different worlds in the world. But yeah, like the melting pot. What do you what do you think about like your opportunities growing up? Do you think you had everything like you had everything available to you, even uh, though you weren't born here? To be real. Yes, absolutely. My, my parents worked really, really hard. My dad worked really, really, really hard uh, to make sure that we were always fed. We always had clothes on us. We were in good neighborhoods and to be able to go to decent schools. Yeah, I wasn't I wouldn't say I was spoiled, but I was very much privileged Uh and I thank God and my parents every day for what I have. And I really, really do thank God for what I don't have because I think a lot of us don't want more things than we want. Yeah, we want to be millionaires and we want yachts and cars and houses and women and families and children. But there's a lot more things in this world that we do not want. So That really, come with those things, you mean? No, just in general, okay. as far as like... We have our health. We have this. Mm -hmm. We have that. You can count the number of things you want on your hands. Yeah. But you can't count the number of things you don't want on your hands. You know? Okay. That makes a lot of sense. I've never heard that before. We want a lot of things, but we there's also a lot of things that we don't, don't want. want in life. Yeah. So. And and you're saying you thank God for those not having those things. Oh, absolutely. That's a great thing that I'll start incorporating in my life because I never thought about it like that. Like, obviously, I pray to God for, like, my health and my safety and everything. And you get into a, a prayer type of mentality you know in a way i try not to pray for like material things because I, I think those will come with time i don't want to ask god out for money that's like never been something that i wanted to do but it makes sense to to think about okay i'm asking god for this this and this or just guidance and stuff but maybe saying hey thanks thank you for not like giving me like things i don't have cancer or i don't have like i didn't lose my leg during when i did that stupid thing thank you for those things that it's infinite almost there's almost an infinite amount of things that we can thank god that we don't have oh yes i was Privileged. I was working at a at a gym at a condo, and I was working at the Trump condo in Sunny Isles. And I met a doctor there, older lady, a, uh, anesthesiologist. And she would always she'd always tell me I'd have ups and downs in boxing. So she'd see me sitting on the desk, and she's like, "Hey, remember, you got to thank God for everything you have, and thank Him for everything you don't have." So ever since then, she like Changed. that's always yeah. yeah, it's always really stuck with me. One hundred percent. Growing up, when you got into boxing, were you, like, you were in high school, right? So, like, did yes. people think any differently of you? No one really knew. Uh, low-key? Yeah, it was super low-key. I, I got into the boxing, and at the time, in high school, I loved football. Football was, football was life. Football was, I, I, at the time, it was much more than boxing, and uh, I, I did it here and there. I'd get into fights with the, my football friends, and... They'd be like, oh, don't, don't mess with him. He got a hot temper. He's a little boxer. Oh, yeah. Boxing was low key. So, yeah, I, I, I did the amateur stuff. I I didn't get that many fights as an amateur down here. How just, many fights? I lied and said I had 40-something fights. I really had like 18 fights. I probably had hundreds of sparring sessions with uh, world champions, Olympic gold medalists, amateur standouts, great pro, pro fighters. I started doing that when I was 17. I was sparring like. The best of the best in Miami. Uh, that's what really helped my pro career, I would say. It wasn't really the amateur fights. And and how does that work in terms of, like, someone who doesn't really know much? Like, you can you can become pro after only fighting a couple of amateurs, right? You can pro come, you can, yeah. So if you guys want to turn pro, you can become pro. At, I believe it's five or more. But and you don't even have to have won any of those. Do I you? think nowadays you don't even have to have one amateur fight anymore. Uh, and that's what I've been telling a lot of these young guys. I'm like, listen, these these uh, you got to look at the bright side of Jake Paul, Logan Paul. You could do what they're doing. You yeah. know, if you do have a good social media presence, uh, presence, if you have a good f YouTube or following or all, any of these things. And even if you don't, even if you just want to compete yeah. at boxing, you Boxing, I would say, is one of the only sports. You don't have to be the best athlete. You don't have to be. You just you got to have heart. You got to have balls, mm -hmm. decently healthy, and yeah. 
and work hard. Eventually, when you have those four things, the fifth most important thing comes into place, and that's thinking. Thinking of how to win yep. and not lose. Thinking how to hit people and not get hit. Uh, understanding ring generalship. But the first four things, I mean, you should all, it should, or it could go in the opposite way, being smart, working hard, yeah. this and this and this. But those four things, as long, uh, with good IQ, as far as being a fighter, anybody can become a boxer. It doesn't mean anybody can become a world champion. That's when you have to value those attributes and better yourself every day with them. And But this is a, a remarkable sport where, yeah, you guys, you can work hard, become a champion. You can work hard, m- make a decent living. So it's definitely possible. And really, the more fighters that tra- become boxers, uh, the more the business will grow. So Is there a lack of, like, boxers right now? Um it's a tough sport, so it's it's really a, you know, you think of boxing, you think of violence. Yeah. So it's it's not very common for men or women, especially children belonging to parents to say, like, I want to be a boxer, you know, can you put me in it? Not many people want to do that, but if you do have the heart and you have the determination, you understand the consequences that come with it, yes, you can be brain dead. Yes, you can have yeah. Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. These are all risks just like any other sport. But if you are willing to take those risks, you can do a lot with your life. You can. I was. I grew up here. I'm. I'm neither American, neither Egyptian, right? Uh, I was able to represent my country. I was able to make a name for myself in my country. I have a decent name for myself in the boxing community. I have a decent name for myself in my city. So, I'm fortunate, and I want more. I'm not settling, but I think a lot of individuals want to do what other boxers have done with their lives. Gotcha. Um, and b- b- surpass guys like me by tons, you know? Yeah. I mean, you're not done yet, though. You still got no, 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 yeah, no. You still got a good still, amount of years left. You still got, like, like 10 more people to knock out, 11, yeah. 12. There you go. Uh, when, you, when you first started boxing at a young age, was it yourself that got yourself into it? Or was it your dad? It was ESPN uh, Classic Knockouts. What, did you just go to a boxing gym? Yeah. <laughs> just walked into the gym and they're like you should do a class first you should learn how to box first i'm like no 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 i want to learn were you a good fighter as a kid like when you got into fights when you were a little kid yes very good really yeah yeah i'd hit my friends and be like dude stop yeah i'm seeing green yeah what did you ever get into a fight when you were a kid a lot yeah like like fist fight yeah you knock kids out i've knocked kids out i've gotten i've gotten beat the fuck up really jumped uh Fortunately, I've jumped people. <laughs> yeah. I've, when I, you got jumped, were you, how old were you? Uh, I was 14. Yeah? yeah? By like, just... That's like four four guys. Damn. That's... You know, because... I you, don't blame them. You I, think... I, I fought their little friend in the morning, but he was picking on my little friend, so I, I just... Yeah. yeah. You think about, like, boxers. And when I think about boxers, I kind of think about people that are, like, just really into boxing. But when I, when I talk to you, you, like, articulate yourself well. And we talked about this the other day. Like, you have a good... You're, like, almost, like... I don't know how to put this because I see you went to college and you like have it all. Yeah. Good looking dude. No homo. Um, you amazing boxer, obviously too, but you like, you have like a, you're like smart, bro. And I don't think a lot of boxers have that aura. You know what I mean? In a way. I wish I was a little smarter. If I was smart, I would have not done boxing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I contradict I, everything yeah. I just said, but yes, if I was smart, I'd, I'd try I don't to think so though. <sighs> I think it's, I think it's your, this is like when you die, and you look yeah. back, you're like, damn, I was a professional boxer. I was a world champion. You know, I, God I, willing, but yeah, God willing. And I chose to do boxing as far as that sense. Like, I think being a fighter is like being an artist. Um, it's it's very very close. It's a thin line. Uh, yeah. So I, 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 that's why I chose boxing. I I always knew it can really differentiate me from other individuals. Yeah. But yes, uh, you can be smart without school. But going to school has helped me, and it, I went to school for kines and exercise phys. So it's also I chose that to also be a little selfish and help me as far as understanding how my body will react to training so much in boxing. Yeah, and to to better myself because a big part of boxing is being physically yeah. fit and active and understanding the human body. Yeah, definitely, and I think that's what's really differentiate. I, I was also fortunate enough to be surrounded in school with individuals that have helped me tremendously grow. Um, like one of my trainers I went to school with and he's 
not there is no comparison as far as knowledge of exercise fizz he's worlds ahead of me and i'm super fortunate to have individuals like him like continue to be in the, the presence of my life and get me better every day definitely what i meant too is like i don't know how to explain i don't know if i'm getting my point across well but I, like, I i get it i, I know what you most saying. boxers like, don't have a college degree right mm -hmm. now, uh, most Especially boxers at don't. your level like, most boxers don't but i would say the good thing about sports like mma since we're just shooting the shit good thing about sports like mma a lot of these mma fighters what what's special about mma is a lot of it, the top mma fighters are good wrestlers yeah. for you to be a good wrestler you had to have at least um done it in high school right and for you to have at least done high school wrestling you had to have at least kept a 3.0 gpa or okay. a 2.5 so then they have at least a high school understanding of maintaining good grades maintaining good conduct grades yeah. so that's why i would say a lot of the mma fighters are are more book educated yeah i'd say boxers bro boxers are so smart yeah all these boxers that didn't go to school, they are ridiculously smart. I was telling a friend of mine, um, a lot of, I, I personally speaking, I think a lot of us boxers, we act young and immature. We sometimes come off as we like look young because we take care of ourselves uh, as far as physically inside. Uh, we, we have really, really old souls. Uh, when it comes down to it, when we're by ourselves, uh, I can't just speak for myself. I, I, I would say like 80%, 90% of boxers, maybe 100% of boxers feel this way. I think we, we age very quickly inside and stay that age for the rest of our lives. Because once we're done with boxing, for some reason, boxing is always still inside of us. And, you know, that's why we, a lot of us get into a lot of them or have gotten into like drugs, alcohol, things like that. It's 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 a very tough sport to leave because it gives us a knowledge that we can't explain to anyone. We have to read people's eyes when we're in a see a boxing match. You're reading facial expression. You're reading body language. You're reading uh you're the team the opposite team's body language you're also reading your team's body language you're seeing guys go to the bat you're breaking things down you're like why is he peeing so much why is he looking at me like this is that why you're is that why you're telling me that i observe things well yes of course because when i notice people that observe things well oh, what notice, would you say you're like i you said a couple things but i was like that's interesting i never had anyone tell me that before but yeah it's like, because you 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 yeah. literally like you do tend not to living. blink uh who me yeah you tend not to blink when you look uh, I think you see when you blink, you skip time. Mm -hmm. When you blink, you fast forward time. All humans blinking is a, you lose a second when you blink, it makes time faster. When you don't blink, you're observing more of time. You're absor uh, you're, uh, uh, absorbing more of, of life, information, yep. life information. Yep. So all these things play into like who you are as a person, your facial expressions, your body language, everything. Yeah. And I think boxing has taught all these guys this shit from when a yeah. lot of the, like Caleb, Canelo, these, these boys have been boxing since they're four. Yeah. Imagine telling a four year old, like, Hey, you got to go beat this kid up and you better yeah. win. Yeah. It's like a lot goes into your head. It's war. Yeah, no, that's, that's true. It's this knowledge that doesn't really exist in the general public yeah. other than MMA. It, I think it existed like a thousand years ago. Yeah, yeah. War was much more common. Yeah. And we fought a lot with people. Yeah. That's interesting though. You said like you can read your corner. So you're telling oh, yeah, me like, dude. like when you're in, I always wonder this when you're in a fight, I can tell before the fight, if my coaches are too nervous or if you're losing the fight, like if they're telling you, Hey bro, Hey champ, oh, you're, winning, yeah, you're winning the fight. You're winning the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're like, no motherfucker. I know I'm not yeah. winning. I can tell by the way you're like acting. Um, uh, they won't lie to you. <laughs> See, like oh, they won't. Okay. No, no, they okay. won't lie to you. Yeah. yeah. I've seen corners. They'll though. actually lie to you to make you think you're losing. Okay. okay. They'll be like, you're losing even though you're winning. Yeah. They'll be like, hey, you're losing. So they want you to do more. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting, like, I, you know what I always thought? Maybe it's because of privacy, but do they do they ever, like, release, like, the, the corner talks? They do sometimes, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In between corners, for sure. In between rounds. Yeah. yeah sometimes Some shit probably has been said. Especially more um, on, like, uh, not... not like rated R, I don't know how to say it. Yeah, yeah, like explicit, explicit. Yeah, like Showtime, DAZN, uh, ESPN Plus. 
when like subscription based, yeah, they let you hear the cursing and everything. And everything. Gotcha. What's the craziest thing you've heard in the club? I got slapped. <laughs> really? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> is that that guy, Carlos? Yeah. I didn't realize that you guys have. He is like your corner guy too. Yeah, he's been my guy. Even if I've worked with other trainers, um, like he's Car- your guy. Carlos is my loyal man, man. He's yeah. he's 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 been. I know if I go to. If I go into war with China, bro, mm-hmm. no, no, no. Like, I love, I love all cultures. <laughs> Forget about cultures. Uh, if go I go into war with, war with aliens, anybody, aliens. like aliens, all right, yeah. yeah. Uh, Carlos is right there. He'll be like, "You want me to build you a spaceship?" <laughs> He's your loyal guy. Oh, bro. Like, yeah, I thought I saw I was uh because you sent me some of your old videos, and I saw him, I was like, "That's the same dude from the gym." What? Yeah, he looks pretty good. He hasn't aged very much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's a boxing thing. Yeah, uh, that, um, that's um. That's interesting. The whole corner thing. Have you ever had someone in your corner you didn't really want in your corner? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're quick to that. Oh, yeah. You don't have to name names, but like who? Uh, Caleb's coach. Caleb's old coach, but he left him. And I knew Caleb would leave him too because he's not a disciplined coach. I, okay. was, I would always wonder. I'm like, I'm, I'm aware of things. So I think it's like, is he just doing this to me? Or does he live his life like this? And what is it? Because he wants to make money off of you type no, of thing? No, 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 no. He loved boxing. He definitely loved boxing, but... Remember, discipline is not discipline. Is discipline has many definitions to it, and it's also about doing the right thing all the time. And some people can't do that. Yeah, and you just didn't like his energy. I didn't. I don't. I don't think he was a man that was giving it his all. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. But that's that. Yeah, and I, and I can't. I'm not gonna take that back because I was right. Like, yeah. His best fighter left him as well. How does you? How do you feel when you're like? But I don't want to talk shit about anybody. No, like, he's a course, fucking good dude. Of like, I don't give a I'm, fuck about I'm him. sure he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, the reason I'm asking is because he's a gr- he's a he's a really really boxing historian. I like, don't even know what you're talking about, but <laughs> like his name, I'm not gonna say his name, but he's a good yep. like he loves boxing. He's like it's it's nothing like that. I'm asking you because I'm trying to direct the conversation and get some some interesting answers because guys are watching this podcast listening. Ahmed has had podcast interviews before where they ask him the same generic questions and shit. I'm trying to ask him questions outside of like. Yeah, I'm, the, I also told Matt like, bro, don't. I, I fucking like Caleb. I like these Canelo guys. I don't want to come off like anything. I don't. These are top fighters. If Canelo's saying he's fucking tired, because I said this about this guy, I'm not taking it back. Yeah, he, the man said he's fucking tired, yeah, right? Yeah. But he's still Canelo Alvarez, bro. And, like, and he's he's undisputed champion of the world. Like, probably ninety nine percent of the people that watch this podcast are gonna have no idea what the fuck you're talking about about tired anyway. Yeah. But it's more like let's open the mind up of a boxer. Like the reason I'm asking you about have you ever had someone in your corner that you don't didn't really want there or you like kind of thought differently of it is because when you're in the moment of the fight, is it ever like like yeah. you feel like the pressure outside of that because there's so much pressure while you're in the ring. But I'm sure that you've been in the ring where you've had pressure outside. Like we said, girlfriend, fucking okay. problems, maybe. I don't know. Someone's like, hey, bro, I'm going to go take pictures of you at the fight. And then he's like, oh, I can't go, bro. And you're like, damn, Absolutely. fuck. That thing about that. But do like, I do I let those things get in my head now? No, not at all. Not at all. But the reason I asked the corner guy and the coach in the corner is because they're actually there with you. Like, if your girl is fucking you up and there's all this shit, whatever, she doesn't show up to the fight, your parents don't come. Like, they're kind of outside of it. There's the, the people in the corner, like, they talk to you every round, right? Like, they're, they're, they're the only ones between you and the other fighter. Uh, yeah. That's true. So, so you, you have to really find someone you trust. Right now, I'm yeah. working with Carlos. Is always my, he's always going to be around. He wraps my hands. He's he's always going to be around. Um, I'm working with a guy named Al Bonani right now. He's in the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame. He's I brought him back into the business. He gave me my first four pro fights. Um, he's an older dude, but I've been super fortunate enough to been placed around good people. In boxing, and I'm not just saying they have good souls and they're good people. I'm saying like, no, they good, fi- like they're good in the business of boxing. And yeah. That's all that matters to me. It's a business. So when he's in the corner with you and Carlos he, is in the corner, you feel like um, yeah. uh, this is this is my people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So like your dad, he's super your, real. Your he, dad has never been in the corner with you. Uh, I, I'll hear. I'll no. He, my dad, he watches. Okay, so yeah. he's not the type of guy that you want in your corner. No, because he doesn't know the sport like that, gotcha. and he knows that he knows his place. Gotcha. My dad, my dad knows the sport in his own sense. Yes, and that's not to instruct. And I have, a, I mean, I never achieved any level of professional success in sports, but when I played baseball, I was similar to my dad. I like my dad outside of the the game, but I didn't like him like coaching the team. I yeah. didn't like it. I didn't your pops. Like it. But some people do, like Floyd Mayweather and his dad. Well, they didn't really have the great relationships. Maybe that's not the best. Yeah, uh, his uncle. 
Roger. Yes. So it's still. Kind I mean, of there's family. other father son duos. Tia right? Fimo, yeah. Vasily Lomachenko, Lomachenko, but I've heard Vasily Lomachenko's dad's like a really, really a good trainer. Yeah. Um, other fathers I've heard aren't good trainers, but they they're good with their boy. Like that's all that matters, yeah. you know. But I've heard like Vasily because that's an interesting conversation. It's like boxing is is an individual sport, yeah. but. It's definitely a team. The, Your team is also a guy a named Mike Leonardi. Always, always until this, he you know, he always says until this day, the biggest secret to becoming a world champion in boxing is a team. Gotcha. That's yeah, a, having that's a, a real team. Yep. And it's true. I I didn't. I've never. I don't think I've even had a real team yet in a fight. Yeah. Uh, it's always I, been just me and Carlos, me Carlos and John, uh, me and Carlos. That's why. That's I, why I'm asking is because like maybe maybe that's like. Just, sh- yeah, that's the next steps for Ahmed is finding his his team, you know. For to sound, I think I told <laughs> anybody wants to box and you really want to be successful, find a really really good trainer, a man that knows the boxing, knows the business, and get yourself a really really good lawyer. <laughs> and I and I don't even mean it as far as negativity. Yeah, it's with anything in life, you're always going to need that lawyer. Yeah. especially in boxing and especially in professional sports, especially if you're in like, if you're in being involved with corporate, you know, like, yeah, for sure. No, you, you those two it. things will set you off for success. Don't, don't, don't think what I'm saying is like negative or I swear, I'm just really giving you like a shortcut to you becoming a world champion. Like anybody that, because your lawyer is going to move you because he's investing his time. Lawyers, you know, time is money. So at least that's going to be one guy that fully understands business and time and money and l- legalities. Whereas your boxing trainer, especially a knowledgeable boxing trainer, not just a, a, a fancy mitt man, a knowledgeable boxing trainer will go hand in hand with the, with the lawyer as far as projecting you in the right direction technically. So those are the biggest things. And then when you, when you succeed with those two guys, that's when the team starts to... Build. Build, yes. So, and, and this is just my observation again. Um, if I say anything ignorant, it's not because I'm doing it on purpose. You know, it's just because I fucking... Business. Yeah, dude. I'm a fucking normal guy just watching boxing. But I think, like, for example, Canelo Alvarez, he's got a team that's been with him for a while, right? Yes. Floyd Mayweather had his uncle yes. for a while. But um, And that's why I say get yourself a good trainer. Really, Canelo's team is initially Eddie? was Eddie and his dad. Yeah. Eddie's dad. Like, Eddie's dad got Eddie into training and... They had the yeah. little trio, right? Yeah. Then the team gets bigger. Yeah. And that's how, that's, yeah, it is a team, but we're all, we all got to start somewhere. And it, for you to start your team, especially if you're turning pro, not amateur, if you're turning pro and want to turn pro and you become this famous world champion that's making millions, get yourself a good trainer and a good lawyer. That's it. And did, did you ever have either? Like, I was going to say, did you ever have like a team, and you don't have to name names, but did you ever have a team or an energy where you're like, fuck yeah, I feel like I'm on fire? I think now I do. You do now? Yeah. Okay. But before it was kind of like, oh, I like this about my team, but I don't really like this. And yes. that might have fucked you up for a little and bit. And I don't, I, don't, I don't blame them because I wasn't, I started boxing late. So technically I might have thought I was this and this and this, cause of, especially because of my record and how it sounds, but I'm nowhere near what I was probably perceived. I was still, a, yeah, uh, uh, I'm always, I, I always had a puncher's chance. I think that's what, yeah, like technically in a perceptual way of life to just be perceived, I'm a hard hitter. Mm-hmm. That's all I am. That's all I am maybe to top analysts. It's like, oh, he can't fight, but he could punch. All right. That gave me always a chance. But to get better, you had to get technically better and, and all that. And maybe I didn't perceive that in my, like maybe I thought I was better than I actually was. And, and that's gotcha. exactly what happened. And that's gotcha. fair too. Like there is no right and wrong, but I had to step up my game. And I think over the last two, three years, I've understood the sport much more, thankfully. Do you think that like that punching talent was God given or you think that like, you yeah, dude, that? Oh, I mean, I think it's cause I was a fat boy. Oh, you were fat when you were younger? Yeah, I was really fat. So I really? think carrying a lot of weight when you're like young as a kid yeah, and then just losing too. it yeah. helps you just... You you, you 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 stay with that. Yeah, you just your body's like, oh, he got lighter. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard, you know? Oh, I didn't know you were a fat kid. I yeah. thought you were a skinny kid. I think your bones get denser yes, because yes. you're carrying I'm, a lot I'm of weight. I'm a dense fucking guy. Yeah. I've always been a dense guy since yeah. I was younger. 
I did a DEXA scan too, so I wasn't wrong. Like, okay. my, I have like ultra, like they say my bones are too old, like dense. That's so funny because we talked about swimming and you're like, yeah, your, your legs sink. Your legs sink too. Yeah. I'm like, a, I'm like a chimp in water, bro. Really? <laughs> yeah, if, I, if I'm not relaxed, if you don't relax, yeah, I'm, I'm like, is, is your dad like bigger? My, yeah, we were just talking about my dad's like, I, I don't eat that much. Why am I not? I'm like, we're just big people. Yeah. We might not be. He's not that fat, though. No, he's not. But he he walks around like 220. But he's saying like, he's like, I want to lose some weight. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> but it's like, nah, bro, we're big. Even my mama is like big, too. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting, bro. Because but, you have a physique of like, you have a physique of like a, like, like a skinny kid from like, I thought you were always skinny. I don't uh, know you're no, I, Yeah, that's Girls tell me that too. They're like, because like, you had skinny. that. You're you like, have you have the abs of like a skinny, of, like not a skinny guy, but you have the abs of like when you're younger, like you always had abs type of guy. But you nah, know, you were fat. Nah. John, my trainer, I used to tell him, it's like, dude, I can't get a V cut, I can't get a six pack. He's like, you're just not eating right. I'm like, no, it's genetics. He's like, all right, no, you, you, I mean, you're you're pretty lean. Well, this no. was when I was younger. Gotcha. So gotcha, then gotcha. That, I, I'm like, I got a six pack, I got a V cut. He looked at me, he's like, told you it was nutrition, bro. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, um, if you want a six pack, you want a V cut. Stop doing crunches. Just yeah, eat of right. Of course. Cut the carbs back yeah. a little bit. <laughs> do some cardio. Uh, just eat eat less and, and do more. Yeah. Eat less and do more. It's, it's simple. Cal- caloric deficit. Yeah. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, next thing I wanted to ask you, too. Uh, when you get into a fight fight mode, right, when you're in the, that fight camp mode, what is it like? Like, what are the outside distractions like? Outside distractions? Like, fight camp. Like, right now, you know, so, you're not in camp. Uh, but... What are, what are the things that I really, really crave the most doing? No, more like, how do you deal with, like, the bullshit? Because you ha- obviously, you're human, bro. We had a conversation earlier, like, we had a real friendship conversation. And people might look at Ahmed El Ali and say, this guy's a professional boxer. But Ahmed is a, is a human like everyone else. I'm not Can a human, bro. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm literally not human. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just but, I, I really think a lot of the things I do aren't human. Of I th- course, of course. I think psychologically, if I'm going through tough times, I'll... I'll go work out again. Okay. And I don't think that's good because leading up to a camp, you also, as much as hard as you need to work, you need to recover. Yeah. Do I have other distractions? I love women. <laughs> like, when I, like, I love women. Um, uh, do I like to eat? Not as much as I love women. Like, this is a good example. I, you're you're kind of on the right track of where I'm trying to go, but let's say your boy asked you, hey, man, I'm having like a birthday party during camp. Are you like... You like no response to the text, or no, are you like, no, no. dude, like, like, hey, uh, brother, I'm really busy right now. I'm in camp. Like, sorry. It depends. So okay. if it's a, it shouldn't depend. Um, a part of me likes to live like Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, I believe like if you're putting in everything, you can do things. Yeah, and as far as you're controlling what you're doing, like, can I go and party? Yeah. Am I gonna go and drink and Smoke and stay out and uh, play with people. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go enjoy myself for a couple of hours. Put give myself a curfew. Maybe I'll say to myself, "Hey, you're gonna stay until eleven, eleven thirty. Even if they're staying up the whole night, yeah. Give yourself an hour to get home. That way, you're in bed by twelve, twelve thirty. Um, if you don't, if you feel tired when you wake up, it's okay. You learn from it and yeah. you learn not to do that next weekend. During an eight-week camp, though, it's only eight weeks, so I try to tell myself, like, bro, hold off. And usually the people that I have in my life, thank God, understand that, and they won't want to push your buttons yeah. in or anything. They'll be like, yo, I know you got to fight. It's my yeah. birthday. If you want to slide through, can come on through. We're at, we're just eating right now, so just come through, bro. But if not, I understand. And thank, thankfully, like, I'm around good people, bro. No, I mean, that's a, that's an interesting thing, though, because other, other than, I mean, other than, like, bodybuilding prep, there's not a lot of sports that, like, you go into like this this monk mode type of thing, and yeah. boxing is, is the big one. That's like the the main one is like you guys going to camp, and camp is like, from what I understand, it's different yeah. from regular life. I've been very, I would say personally, I've been very emotional because I've been pr- pretty much living in camp mode for the last like three four years. So yeah. it gets very, not just exhausting, but mentally and emotionally sad. Yeah, because you're like, oh, when am I fighting and this and that, and they're like. They keep telling you, you got to stay ready. You got to stay ready. So um, I've missed on lots of times to have fun. I've missed on lots of opportunities to travel. Uh, and I've given it to boxing, hoping that it would 
give me something in return. And it has. It already has. By the way, I live my life. Thank God I am blessed. I live my life because of boxing, the way I live my life. I went to school and graduated college because of boxing. Um, I've learned what I've learned from the sport. I've made a name from I'm here doing this interview with you because of boxing. Yeah. You know, So a lot of the things I contribute to the sport and I'm super thankful for it. Do I want more? Yeah, I want m much, much more. Um, but I should also be thankful for what I have. Definitely. Definitely. Um, going back to like early, I'm at like early past high school mm. talking about like, you know, first years in boxing, pro boxer college. I remember uh, we had a conversation earlier about like you didn't really get to experience a college lifestyle. Mm. Do you regret that at all or no? Nah. No. Uh no. Yeah. No, I no. I experience it by watching the people in college. I, I recently started college again. Uh, it's on hold right now. But I, going back and looking at it, it's like, no, I didn't miss nothing. Yeah. You think I, I had a lot of fun. Doing, bro, it's it's so much nicer getting on ESPN when you're 23, 24, being on ESPN Top 10. Yeah. Were you on Top 10? Yeah. And so the it's, knockout? It's, yeah, it's like. That's awesome. That's bro. way nicer than going out to the club. Because that, that joy lasts with you forever. Of course, the night that you went to the club, no one's gonna. You're not gonna remember that shit. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember regretting it. <laughs> I'm gonna remember oh, yeah. getting home, and being like, oh my god, my my eyes are burning in the morning. I'm, I'm not feeling. Even if I don't drink, I feel tired, you know. Yeah. And I don't drink. Like I'm just saying, like, being out, sleeping when you're not supposed to, it it, it can be fun. Like there, there, you got to have balance in life. You could do everything, but you got to be responsible. You're a little bit uh, as a professional athlete, though. The balance, unfortunately, isn't the normal human balance. Like yes. most people, are like, oh yeah, it's balance. Weekends we have fun, but like for you, it's like balance is like you kind of have to be more leaning on the side of like chilling. What chilling? No, I was gonna say like for you can't really have the true life balance as a professional athlete, or can you? I don't know. Could can you uh, balance as far as no? Well, like, like like you can't like most people their balance to them is working Monday through Friday and then weekends they do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, a professional athlete can't do that. No. I could go out on Tuesdays if I want. I could go. I could say like, "Yo, let's go out tonight." But my balance would be: Did I get my two workouts in? Did I work out? Did I wake up? Get my run in. Did I wake up? Lift. Did I go to boxing? Did I get my therapy in? Did I recover? Okay, I did all that. I can. I can do something. Okay. And even if I go out and I regret it the next day, I, I fall back knowing like I did everything night right the day before and I'm going to continue doing everything right even if I feel like shit. So you, you, you're more, your mindset is more like if I check the boxes in boxing, I can do other things. Yeah. Because there's right, this, right now or is this always how it's been? No, it's right now. Okay. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I yeah, feel like back in the day you were more like, oh, bro. I, yeah. I lost friends. I lost like my, like, Girlfriends at the time didn't like me. Like it was, I was just hella boring. Yeah, because it was all boxing, no life. And if you got in the way of my life, like you're out, you're out. Gotcha. Let me reset the cameras real quick. Do you like how it's going so far? Yeah. Do you? Yeah, it's great, bro. Is this any different than your other podcast? In what way? Uh, I don't know. Feel? Yeah, it's, dude, it's fucking really great. All right. I think a lot of people will appreciate. It insight for me because bro you're at the end of the day you're like you're a professional boxer bro not a lot of people and and, and like i was gonna say this earlier like i have a friend of mine who's a he's a professional mma fighter but he's lost like five of his amateur fights like i don't see him as a professional no hate on him he's a great dude and fucking way more balls than me he jumps in a cage but like you've been on fucking espn and shit you know what i mean like you're the real deal yeah, in, in a sense like you're like a you say you're a world champion you just don't have a belt yeah like that's you're a legitimate world athlete like a world renowned athlete and it's i think people will appreciate conversations where they're like they don't get to not a lot of people ask questions like this i'm trying to ask questions that you probably haven't gotten before yeah. maybe you have but like i'm sure people would appreciate like oh what does a med think about um what's a recent fight i don't even I haven't followed boxing much lately oh we can talk about shit like that too but i don't i mean do you want to know, I know. Like, like you do you do what you're doing i like it exactly like uh what's a recent fight um uh, I can't even tell you. His boxing Bro, I, is kind of slow, right? No, like, even if there was, I really don't even watch it like I used to. Yeah. I'll watch, like, one or two rounds, and if it's 9 o'clock, I might be passing out myself. So, <laughs> like, like uh, didn't, um, didn't what's his fucking name just fight? Uh, Callum Smith? No. No? No. Joe Smith? 
Didn't he just fight? He fought. Oh, better be Vinyard. Okay. Vinyard. Okay. Okay. We'll say. Yeah. That. Like I, I could ask him his opinions on the fight, but I mean, that's, it's like for a boxing channel to ask. Yeah. I want to ask you more about like, what's in your head, bro? Yeah, like, yeah. what about relationships? Cause you don't want to get specifics, but like, what about that? Like, oh, that's a, we can talk about that. You can go ahead. Yeah. Free for all. Like, Chicks. Like, talk how, about it. How do they even, so are we, are we live? No, we're not live. But right, we're, so, I mean, not live. Are we on? Yeah. We're rolling. We're, yeah. Oh, okay. So go ahead. When you, when you talk about like, when we talk about like how you approach chicks as a professional boxer, what do they say? Like when you're like, I'm a pro boxer, I'm ESPN, I'll highlights, I'm, you know, one day be world champion. I don't say that. You, know? you don't say it? No, I'm super, I'm like, I'm the most awkward, corny dude ever. I told you when we were working out, I'm like a... He's a simp. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, I am a simp. I, I don't even know what simp is. This is not my generation, these words, but... Um, yeah, I'm definitely that. Inside, am I that? Like in the back of my head, am I that? No, bro. I'm I'm uh, I'm conniving and manipulating and intelligent. Yeah. But I am very all all us boxers, not MMA fighters. MMA fighters are more of that. Yo, I'm a MMA fighter. This is my record. This and that. Boxers are all very romantics. We're we're gentlemen. We uh, we approach women with kindness. But if they flip the switch, that's when shit hits the fan. Uh, let me ask you this then. So you've never approached a chick and said, hey, I'm a professional boxer. Like, you've never had that as your, like, one of the things you say. Like, when a girl asks you, what do you do for a living? You no. tell her the truth. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. When people, when they ask, yeah. they're like, oh, you're a boxer? Yeah, yeah. Like, and I think, I think because of how I look, how I sound, I think most people think, like, oh, I'm a boxer at, uh, you know, rumble or something like just an aerobic uh, uh, boxer is like yeah but yeah then they like see me fight or watch me on tv and they're like oh shit yeah he's a real deal he's a real boxer because like at the end of the day like i said bro the way you the way you carry yourself is different you don't carry yourself as like i don't know maybe it's just the boxers that i've met outside of you but you carry yourself with like this almost like like i, I look at you bro. i look and i see smart like i think intelligent in the in the brain i don't know why uh i would say I try to walk with God and be like his messengers. Like, I think God sent messengers in this world that are perfect men. And I think I am nowhere near perfect. But I think if you're a man of God, you try to resemble men of God. And I think when you resemble men of God, God blesses you with light, intellectualism, or... And do you want to call it? I don't think I'm knowledgeable, wise, smart. I just think I'm aware. And I think when you're walking with God, you're more aware of life. I think one of the biggest things that has been integral to my success is, is God. And I think that like just staying closer to him is, is important. And what you kind of said is like why you carry yourself a certain ways. Cause you're, you're obviously, we, we don't share the same religion, but we're like same, same, same. Yeah, we both believe in God, and we both submit ourselves to God in a way. Same, same. It's the same. It's the same thing, bro. I know. I know. I, uh, all you religious folks, don't take it offensive. I think Jews, Christian, Muslims, other faith, we're all the same. Like we're all so similar that it's ridiculously sad what we're doing. But I like the I like the team. You know, the different teams. You know, team Christian, team Muslim. It's cool. Whatever. As long as you believe in a higher power, I think yeah. that we're okay. As long as you're a good person and yeah. you understand, uh, humble yourself. Exactly. Humbling is yes. the biggest thing. If you uh, walk in exalt, then you'll be humbled. And if you humble yourself, then you'll be exalted, right? I think that's how it goes. Something like I've that. heard of that before. And in terms of like your, it, so when you're with a girl, you've already talked to her about the whole boxing thing. Is there a, is girls ever get like, like they ever feel like, like butterflies type of thing that kind of fangirl over no, you? They're like, are you violent? Are you this? Are oh, you really? Like, so they don't even give you like the, the, like, no, man, women, women are so strong and brave. Come on. They give birth. Yeah. You're they right. Give like, bro, sometimes they pop out eight. <laughs> like that, that's some scary shit. But no, I think, sure. I you, think you've been asked, are you violent? Oh yeah. Almost every girl has asked me that. I wouldn't, I would, bro. I don't like killing uh, cockroaches. My mom hates that. I like like carrying them out because they have a purpose in this world. I don't like cockroaches. I really? Are you scared them. of them? No, I'm not scared. I just hate them. They're, they look nasty and they crick, like you know. Like, but 
you know, I don't like, I like hurting people. I like getting knockouts. I do like, I love it. As but far you, as a yeah, fighter, yeah. that's, that's a hole in one in golf. Yeah. You know? So we do boxing because we are somewhat violent. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Do I enjoy being violent? Absolutely. I, when, when I don't knock people out, I feel like I lose. Even if I won a clear unanimous decision. Yeah. I go in there to knock people out. I train so hard and I lift these weights and I run as fast as I can and I injure myself in training. That way I can knock someone out because of the feeling that you get. The genuine good feeling. Um, yeah. yeah. So what, does that, what does that feel like? Oh, man. It feels good. Yeah. I've never knocked somebody out before. I punched one kid in the face when we were boxing <laughs> in, in high school that like, we were boxing like for fun and I don't, I think I knocked him out, but I like put him on the ground and it felt good, but I didn't mean to. We were just like sparring for fun type of thing, but I've never actually knocked someone out cold. It's very satisfying because yeah. uh, your hard work pays off. Yes. Yeah. Like that one video I sent you of you knocking out that one uh, black dude. I don't know who he was. Uh, African-American. Yeah. African-American. Yeah. Same. Whatever. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who the guy is, but he was African-American. Yes. Uh, you knocked him down or knocked him out cold. The tick tick boom one, I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was oh. that? I mean, like, what fight was that? Uh, that was my first fight with Heyman. That was my fourth pro fight. Okay. Uh, it was my first fight on TV. Yeah. Uh, second fight on TV, but it was first fight on major television network ESPN. That was like one of those knockouts where it's like that was ESPN top ten. That was top ten. Yeah, I think I got number two. The first one was a was a baseball catch. Can you believe that? He was like he was like. Yeah, out like a little. Was light he bulb. good? I don't even know who the guy is. He wasn't good. He was. It was a. You know, in boxing, you got to build your record up, and then you start to fight better opposition as you work your way up. My, all fighters, Muhammad Ali, uh, Mayweather, Rocky Marciano, the best of the best have. You have to build a fighter up. Um, yeah, after that, my, I fought better opposition. But, you see, even if you fight low opposition, you still got to handle the job how you should handle the job. Of course. You, you don't fight low opposition and look like you fought... Yeah. Good opposition. You got to put low opposition in its place. You got to put top opposition in low opposition if you can, too. Like, it, I, when I see fighters' records, I see who they fight. When I see who they fight, I see how these guys beat them. So then I start to compete with the guys that beat them. So it's like, okay, this guy beat them by decision. Like, all right, this guy, this guy's, uh, 15 and 3, he has three losses, two of them by, uh, one of them by knockout, right? He's like, okay, he, this kid, he knows how to not get knocked out. He's lost three times. He's a good fighter. I got to win the fight because mm -hmm. he, he's obviously, he has 15 wins, but he only has, he's been knocked out once. All right, I'm going to try to knock him out because I know yeah. like not too many people were able to. So, oh, so you do that. Before oh, yeah. I have to compete also with the previ previous opponent that fought my opponent. Okay. So I'm competing. And this is a meds mindset, or this is, is this, my mindset? Yeah. This is not like standard in boxing. I, I think most boxers, I a lot of my management former managers would be like, dude, the most important thing is to win. My mindset is like, nah, dude, the most important thing is to knock, <laughs> to him, knock out. him out. And that feeling you get, like, it's not. It's not just because of the feeling. It's also because of the recognition that there is no competition. Yeah, you want to you want to make it like clear. No, yes. no, there is no judgment. Yeah. Only God can judge me. Yeah, I got you. Have you ever been won? judged? Yeah. Have you how how many knockouts do you have? Um, I think I'm 22 and one, 18 knockouts. 22. I don't know if I'm 22 and one or 23 and one. I, I, like I don't know which one. Which yeah. Which. No, but you, so most of your fights have ended in a yeah. knockout. I missed a couple of heads, but I was wasn't I wasn't as knowledgeable as I was now because yeah. you don't have to knock people out in the first round. You gotta. You have gotta, you ever been put out cold? Uh, no, thank God. Never. I mean, it could happen. I, w I even if I do, I'll come back. But, but, hell but yeah, yeah, but the only fight you lost, you didn't get knocked out. I got no, stopped. I got I got stopped. The only the I feel like the only reason I got stopped in that fight because I don't feel like all right, Pascal's a big, strong dude, and I don't think he hit that hard to knock me out. But at the moment, I was just I had a bad weight cut, I had a leg injury, and what was going through my mind was like I was getting hit by him. I couldn't even keep my hands up. I was exhausted. Not because I threw a lot of punches. I was just, I think I had a bad coming into the fight. So 
Gotcha. Uh, but you know, in sparring, you've never been like, no, thank you, God. have you ever been hit and you're like, fuck that hell, hurt? Oh, hell yeah. yeah I've gotten like, my ass whooped. You, in boxing, we get our ass whooped more than we do yeah. good. Yeah. It's like baseball. If you're hitting 30, if you're hitting 30%, you're a Hall of Famer in baseball. Mm-hmm. If you're hitting 20%, you're probably leading the league. But if you're hit 30, you're literally, in, you're going to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. So in boxing, if you're, if you're doing good 30% of the time, you're going to be an all-star fighter. Yeah. Just do that. Be, be good 30% of the time. So, yeah, bro, I've gotten my ass whooped. I've whooped the ass of better fighters than me. Yeah. Um, and that's not to say they can't beat me in a fight, but that's just sparring. That's why sparring doesn't mean anything. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, another point I wanted to talk about. Uh, when, you're, when you're, like, post-fight... I've heard this before from other people for, I don't know if it's true, but you've like built up so much before the fight that you kind of get almost like depressed after a fight. Is that true? Yeah. Because so say you win a fight, your, your, your time of joy is right until sunrise. Yeah. Like you win the fight. You say you finish your fight at, if it's nine, you get a little bit more time, but usually fights end by it. Like, so let's say you get to calm down at one o'clock midnight. You, You see the videos, you look at your phone, you get the messages and then right when sunrise hits it's a new day baby yeah and you kind of everyone it, everyone forgets all that so yeah. uh back to the grind it is and the joy slowly leaves yeah it lasts a little bit you know you'll still continue to get nowadays because social of media. social media you get some praise for a couple weeks but the internal feeling of a true fighter is like okay when's the next one it's kind of like how life is, right? Like, I, I don't know what the Muslim religion is about, like, what they say about this, but if you're chasing, like, worldly things, you'll get really disappointed. Yes. But if you chase God, you'll never be of disappointed. So I feel like it's one of those things, too, and, and such a such a, a great accomplishment, like knocking somebody out or winning a fight. But then, like, a couple of days later, you're really, like, you're yeah. off that high. And, and And what makes boxing, I would say, a little bit confusing for us individuals, a lot of these fighters are genuinely very, very nice people. We're very, like, most boxers, and specifically boxers, I say, my, I'm sorry, my MMA guys, but they, they admit, they'll they admit it. MMA guys are a little more ruthless in life. They're just, they're more out there. They're they're more blunt. They can do things. They don't, you know. But boxers are genuine, genuinely nice guys, but the problem is it's very contradicting to the sport itself because of how violent it is. Of course. So we're, we're tremendously nice, but we also genuinely love hurting each other. Yeah. You know, uh, and I'm saying it genuinely. Every time I've talked to you, even through text, you can read someone's point. Like if they're pissed off or in a bad mood, always been great. You've always like cool and composure. And past couple of days, we have spent time together. You're a very composed guy. Boxing like, and God, thank yeah. God. Boxing, yeah. I would say, God keep it giving me the health health to do boxing yeah. has allowed. That's what boxing teaches you. And that's what I like about you, bro. Just as a friend or as a someone who's looking in at the outside ends, like you're composed. A lot of guys I know that like fight are like fucking like they have this chip on their shoulder. I don't know why. <laughs> Little man syndrome, bro. Yeah, probably. A lot of them are probably short, but like, <laughs> uh, yeah, they just like have this weird like. I, I, I used to go my to best a, friends in boxing are little fighters. Usually, really? usually like K, like the the guys in your weight class. Yeah, you tend to not develop a good relationship with i have no idea why but the little guys or the really really big guys bro those are my best friends like in the amateur team i've made egypt's amateur team too so like the big guys were super sweet the little guys were super sweet the guys in my weight class were like oh it's competitive yeah because you're gonna fight against them (laughs) yeah i used to go to a have you ever heard of delray boxing club yes it's a really nice place i love that gym i used to go a lot my buddy used to have a membership i used to go with him they used to do sparring on friday nights and like just some of the guys that are there, they're always just like pissed off. And I was like, I, was like I have a know. couple good uh, pros train there. Steve Jeffrard. I know uh, Shishkin's there. Vladimir Shishkin's there. Emmanuel Stewart's ne- uh, nephew trains there. Uh, trains fighters there. Uh, Sugar Hill. There's a there's a guy. I forget his name. Tall African American dude. Mm, he's a uh, former world champion. No 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 no. He's uh he he's come he's up and coming. He's tall. I don't know. He. They, the only guy out of that gym that I met, there's other guys I met that were great too, but they weren't pros. Um, but he is like composed and I fucking, I follow him on Instagram. We were friends. He follows me back. He's like, kind of like you, like, and I think it has to do with like the skill. Like, of course, you, the better you are, the more humble you're going to be. Like, I, it's maybe not always, but like, yeah, from what I understand, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even, all right. Like, sure. Like 
when it's time to spar, yeah, I talk shit, bro. Like yeah. I get mean, of course. Yeah. Like every like that's why we do this. Like we yeah. like being mean in the moment, but mm-hmm. we're uh, con- it's a controlled environment. This is yeah. when we're allowed to be gotcha. ourselves. Gotcha. In life, I have to be a man of God. Gotcha. Gotcha. But God gives me permission to be who I want to be when like I get into animal. a boxing ring. Yeah. It's not really an animal. I can be. I can be like whoever I want to be. You talk shit in the ring. Yeah. You're like, obviously, I don't know what the fuck you say, but like, I like to make facial exp- like if my opponent makes a face or if he gets hurt. Or like, yeah. have you ever had a conversation with like, I'm gonna fuck you up now. I'm gonna pull. Oh yeah, 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 of course. And what do they say? They just look at you. Yeah, of course they get scared. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's Read funny. Their body language. They're all the, I don't know if they're scared, but they're they're walking backwards. They're not I remember, coming forwards. I remember seeing a video of Caleb Plant and Canelo. Do you remember seeing that one where Caleb Plant was like telling Canelo, "It's like I like the way you fight. You're doing a really good job." You could just tell that he was nervous as fuck. Oh yeah. yeah. And Canelo was like, "You're better than I." I think he said he's like, "You're better than I thought." Yeah, you're better than I thought. And Canelo's like, "Thank fuck. you, thanks." And he's like, "Continue trying to fight." You, yeah. you can tell in people's voices. It's funny because life, like. When you catch someone doing something wrong, sometimes they'll do the same shit. They'll start talking a lot. Oh, yeah. And they start getting nervous. I, I, I would prefer, like, putting myself in that situation, I'd say, don't say a word. But I, what I would like to say is, like, oh, fuck. Like, I'm going to fuck you up, little man. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to, but I hope, hopefully I get that opportunity, you know? Yeah. No, it's just funny because, like, you can tell when someone's nervous. Like, oh, I think yeah. Conor McGregor did it, too. When he was like, he was fighting with Khabib, he was like, it's just business. It's just you know, business. Conor did something out of way, and that's really cool. He, what did he do? They were, I think it was a way in our press conference. He said, Dana, step back. Let me, let me get closer to him. I want to smell his pussy. <laughs> I was like, God damn, bro. That's really intelligent. So, yeah. That's funny. But, yeah. Uh, and, Sorry for the language. Oh, no. It's all, it doesn't matter. Um, last, last couple of things. I know you got to head back. And we, we, we'll probably do this at some point again in the future. It's been amazing. Anything out there that you would tell, like, a younger version of yourself or people out there that, like, just not boxing, not you know, it may be boxing, but things that like little pieces of advice you'd give to somebody who's younger. Like it comes from you. What would it be? If it came from me, or if you're still in school and you love boxing, still love boxing, and but do really good in school. Um, treat your body well. Treat people well. Uh, treat your women well. And uh, if you don't believe in God, try to find a reason to believe in God. Rather, regardless of, of where you're at in life, um, I think those are really good fucking points. Like some people might be like, well, you know what? I don't really have time to, for God is one of the things. Like I don't have time for religion. I don't have so time. try. Yeah, I think those are great. Um, I would like to say one more thing, if, if possible. Um, when you're like... You you where you're at right now and where you'll be in like five years, like is there anything you want to say to your future self? Like, like right now we look back at this podcast in five years, we're gonna say a meta thirty seven is gonna say, "Damn, thank you for telling me that type of thing." Like, is there anything you tell your future self? Um, just because it's tough, don't stop going, and uh, yeah, just. Just keep doing it, dude. Don't don't stop. You're almost there. You don't know when it's gonna happen, but it will happen. It will happen. I think so too, bro. Um, I really appreciate you coming on. It's been a flat blast. Me and me and Ahmed got to work out a little bit earlier. Um, he's got a long drive back, so thank you for coming on, bro. Thank you, um, man. Thank you for having me. On. Always awesome. a pleasure. Thank you guys for listening to this buff talk. This is Ahmed El Biali, a professional boxer, future world champion. Just doesn't have a belt yet. We'll catch him on another buff talk soon. Thank you guys for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace. Hey guys, thank you guys for checking out this video. Make sure to go check out all of our other podcasts, Buffalo Barbecues, our Buffalo Workouts, and also a slew of other things, including challenges and whatnot. So make sure to check out all of these different things. Thank you guys for watching. I am Old School Matt here, and this is Water Buffalo TM. Peace. Peace.